In this third part of this video series, uh, we start with the small factory B model, which we finished in the previous part. It is available on the ClickUp module of the simulation course. You can download it. It should be a zip file containing two files, an ALP file, which is the actual model, and then also the factory layout, which is just the PNG image. So once you open it, I'm going to save it as a different file name to just make sure that I don't overwrite it and that I kind of keep track of the of the different files. So I'm going to save, change that to C. I also change the Java package so that it is distinct uh, from version B. Also, if I click on the simulation tab, this is kind of the default window that opens up as soon as you run your model. Uh, that still says small factory B, so I'm just changing that text file as well. In this portion, I'm going to finish off the model by adding a conveyor from the assembly point all the way to the packaging add some resources w that will package our assemblies into boxes and from there it gets transported to the loading area and they will be batched in groups of 10. To start off I'm going to add some space markup elements to represent the conveyor as well as the packaging area and where the resources are. I find the space markup in my palette, go to my space markup tab and let's start with path for the conveyor. And if you're anything like me, we like to just make sure that this actually follows the given image. part I'm going to call space conveyor assemblies. I'm going to add space pre packaging. It should be invisible. Let me just go back to my conveyor. I would like that to appear as a conveyor and it is not bi-directional, it only traverses in one direction. Speaking of which, I still think the previous one also says bi-directional, we can just switch that off. I'm also going to add the packaging area itself. an area where my workers will appear and show up and lastly for the loading area. Just to see the effect, let us make the locations layout in the loading area, not random, but rather arranged, and you can see the difference. All the space markup areas need not be visible when we run the model, that is invisible as well. Good, now we can actually start adding the logic. The spaces is, have all been defined. I'm going to get rid of my sync block. I'll add right in the end.
Right, once it leaves the assembler, I'm going to put in a buffer. So I go to my process modeling library. I'm first going to put in a queue that will act as a buffer, uh, which is the assemblies that await an, an, a point onto the conveyor. Then we'll add the conveyor. The speed of the conveyor, the length will be defined by its path and the speed will, let's say, be one meters per second, one times variable control space meter divided by second. The location for the conveyor will be our space conveyor assemblies. And we're going to change the entity length. At this point, what comes out of the assembler block is not assemb um, sorry, is not bodies anymore, but assemblies. And the assemblies at this point does not have any parameter. So for now, we're just going to hard code it to actually say it is 1.5. Let's make it 1.0 meters. From there onwards, once it leaves the conveyor, it should go into the pre-packaging area. Just get off the conveyor and it can be stacked there, awaiting people to actually package them into boxes. Now, you'll see in the process modeling library that there is a service block. But what the service block assumes, if you have a look into your reference guide, is that the entity type that comes into the service block um, that undergoes some activity or some change or delay, the service block actually assumes that it is the same entity type at the beginning and at the end. What we would like to do, though, is to show that an entity can actually be transformed from one agent type to a different one. And that is very similar to what we've done in the assembler. We had a body and a door coming in, and what left the assembler block is an assembly. We're going to do the same by using an assembler block. And in this case, we will only have one input, which is the assembly, and what will go out is the packaged product. And this we're going to call packaging. The entity types out will be a package, which we haven't created yet. So let's just go on first and create a new entity type. 